So early on in my streaming career, a little over two years ago, I did a video on Parrot Analytics. And at that time, I did a critical profile of the company and a breakdown of how they claim their process delivers uh, demand metrics, a, a, a term that they coined. And uh, since then, as I feared, uh, Parrot has uh, weaseled their way into a number of places that they absolutely don't belong. Uh, case in point, of course, right now, is that uh, they're in partnership with an entertainment trade magazine, the publication The Wrap. So I will now be even more wary of materials that are coming out of that particular outlet. And that may elicit a question from you, the viewer of this particular video. Why is your opinion so negative on analytics firms like this? Well, I will give you that answer here in this video. Here we go. So as I mentioned in my intro to this particular video, um, at least as far as today's topic is concerned, Parrot Analytics um, keeps popping up in a variety of places. And again, as I mentioned earlier, they really don't belong there. I thought this type of uh, logarithmically driven data scraping pseudo demand measurement scam would have died a long time ago. Uh, why? Why did I expect that? Well, it's easily manipulated. And you can see, you and I can both see what happens when you let things become easily manipulated. How? Well, they are manipulating it by buying bot farms on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, etc, etc. And that pushes fake engagement, which is one of the primary measurements that a ridiculous type of analytics firm like this is actually utilizing to calculate interest in something. So their patented process is based on extrapolation of many data sets. Well, in other words, Guesses. That's right. That's what extrapolation means. Those data sets can already be and likely are well corrupted with bad information from the word go. And that's before they fall into the magical algorithm that, of course, uh, entities like this utilize to uh, come up with their guesses. <laughs> Let me introduce some of you to something that you probably don't know. It's an acronym. It's G-I-G-O, GIGO. And what is that? Well, it stands for garbage in, garbage out. And I should mention, to wrap up this paragraph, that, uh, well, lots of things are patented that actually don't work. And this is one of the many, this particular formula. See, if you write a program, at least in the programming world, or even something that's supposed to function properly on the internet, um, and you have a flaw built into the code from the very beginning, well, your program will always result in uh, returned bad results. You will always find, well, not the right answer. And Parrot Analy Analytics as an entity is actually uh, this on steroids. Uh, there's uh, multiple sets of guesses based on some flawed data. Once we find out uh, exactly how corrupted Twitter is, then we'll probably have a more uh, clear idea of just how wrong they are. And that's only from one social media platform. Say what you will about Nielsen's ratings in the rating system and how they come up with everything as far as their data tracking. But in the end, at least you're going to have actual hard data. And that data is reflected even in personal re recordation and or the actual ability to monitor pe people's like consumption, which is far more valuable than what they write down because Nielsen artificially skews, uh, unfortunately, because of uh, the way people are manipulated by the media. Uh, when they fill out a diary, they're going to artificially uh, skew towards you know, saying that they viewed something that is uh, smarter programming, which is why for the longest time, PBS was held up as high as it was in the Nielsen ratings, which uh, <laughs> came crashing down to reality as they expanded their box program. But I digress. Anyway, um, so the the entity Nielsen itself has uh, the the most uh, the the most well established track record. Let's put it that way, and they were the most respected in the industry. And that was up until very recently, when um, well, co the companies that are being measured didn't like the results, so they started to invest and create. Um, 
well, that are own measurement systems. In fact, why do you think all of these new entities uh, have come into existence tied to all of these studios? It's because they want to protect their bottom line and they really don't want to give anybody any real insight into the actual results of their product's performance, which let me tell you, based on the Nielsen stuff, isn't very good. So do you really believe, and this is a question for everybody, that the owner of a streaming service doesn't know what their numbers are? They don't know what their programs are doing. They don't know that what their performance is. Do you really think they lack the ability to uh, spot trends from those programs to figure out what they're going to do with future shows? Of course they have all that data. And I mean, we all know that, which is why it's pretty ridiculous to try to, you know, go outside to something like Parrot Analytics by anybody, including the people that are trying to get access to that information, like these trade papers. They're kept on the outside for a reason. The studios, these entities themselves, enjoy that lack of transparency, and they can hide things. They do hide things. We know that. We know they hide stuff. See, if investors had actual access to the data on the performance of shows, do you think that we would have had to suffer the last six years of in, in a decline of quality entertainment? Of course not. The audience is being gaslit by successive message-driven filler content masquerading as entertainment, or um, as I'll say here, entertainment in name only. That should make sense to some of you po folks that are more politically minded. <laughs> but the honest way to look at Parrot Analytics and similar pop-up ventures that are driven by these venture capital companies who have uh, you know skin in the game when it comes to the message, well, they're basically just marketing companies. They're no more or no less than exactly that. Uh, that's kind of actually how they're utilized by uh, outside entities, including these trade papers specifically the rap in this case. So in cases where um, paired analytics uh, and similar entities are being cited, uh, like, as I mentioned, the entertainment papers, well, take that with a giant barrel of salt or maybe even a cargo ship full, uh, because you don't really know just how far off these numbers actually are. And I can tell you that we probably are being misled to the tune of something ridiculous that I can't even quantify in a number. To some extent, though, the numbers coming from Samba and Roku can actually be called out or called into question as well. Uh, they're a little bit more reliable, but as their measurements uh, of views and minutes watched and all of that type of stuff, well, that can be misleading as well because it doesn't actually tell you when people stopped watching a given episode or a given show. Uh, you don't know if anybody finished the whole series. You don't know any of that. That's the problem. So when you bring up a problem like what I'm talking about here, it, you should be looking for a solution, which I'm going to try to do or always try to do when I do this. I've been looking for one, to be honest with you. I've been looking outside all over the place. And actually, to date, none of there's no solution that exists outside of, well, the services themselves. So the services actually have all of this data uh, and uh, we may be getting a new door open to information as far as this goes. You can ask the question why, so I'm going to answer it. If you are moving yourself uh, or your streaming service, I should say, because that's really what we're talking about here, into an ad supported venture, uh, you're going to have to show the performance of, of how that's doing somewhere. It's got to be it's got to be something that can be tangible to uh, obviously the advertisers and the ad houses because they're they're going to stop taking your word for it if they haven't already. And they should be because the Nielsen ratings were kind of the best way to like support, you know, any value that you had in your programming. So in thinking critically about this, the number of subscribers to your service is uh, meaningless. And I think that a lot of investors, especially Retail investors have come around finally to that understanding. Um, it's um, it's actually more important to know how a show is performing, uh, or specific shows, and uh, it's not uh, who views the content for you know a couple of minutes or whatever some of these metrics are that are being artificially imposed. It's actually who watches that show to completion, whether it's a completed episode or completed season, and uh, it will be really important to uh, see how many views something gets in order to see if your ad is working and it's getting the exposure that it needs because you can get a lot of impressions but you may be getting the impressions to the wrong audience um, all of this stuff is really important to advertisers and having some insight into that's going to be the most telling 
how a series did uh, is pretty much already measured by large entities, but in particular Netflix, in the case I'm about to cite, um, they can see exactly who finishes all the episodes or when people dropped out of the show completely or when they dropped out of a given episode, the, 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 the fall off time. Right. Uh, if you had if you and I or an advertiser had access to this information, you could actually see uh, why a show fails or will fail in the future. And we already know that in our little section of the Internet, in our fellowship, it comes down now uh, with these shows to actually inserting something like the message in a very ham fisted and bludgeoning way. If I had held political office or if I did currently at the federal level, let's say uh, I would be pushing for transparency uh, of all of this, and, and in particularly on the financial side. Investors have a right to get real numbers for the performance of, well, any of their financial products, which these studios are part of. Clearly, we can actually no longer mm, count on the generalized statements by CEOs, CFOs, and similar uh, during the quarterly calls, because believe it or not, they've been incredibly misleading, and there have been many examples of that in the last few years. You don't even have to look much farther than just the last few months with Twitter and Elon Musk and the fact uh, that once he intended to buy them out and made that public, they began to revise previous statements. I wonder why. So as not to confuse that with the main topic, I'm not gonna digress any more into that, but I'm gonna return to the um, these types of pseudo analytics that, you know, again, are the whole subject of this video. They are far more detrimental as they are likely, uh, they're likely to drive investment in content that would be headed the wrong direction, which it seems to have been the pattern that's been established. Um, that is, of course, if they're naive, naive enough to actually assume that the streamers don't look at their own data, which I'm sure that they do. Hence the big changes that we're seeing over at Netflix and Warner Brothers Discovery right now. They're well aware of their metrics and uh, they're moving a different direction. I think they're gonna be more entities that'll start heading that way as well. And I do believe that in this, uh, the folks over at Midnight's Edge are correct. Disney's gonna be the last to move the right direction, which is stupid. Thanks, Iger. Anyway, recently as shell-shocked showrunner, by way of pushing a lesbian vampire show, last kill was expressing uh, their confusion at the show not getting picked up for a second season. Yet even the disappointment expressed at the cancellation, uh, a lot of quality information was revealed, probably somewhat accidentally. From the article, and I quote, according to Henderson, though the big test for Netflix brass wasn't how many people were watching the show, but how many people were choosing to finish it. Completion. When I got the call to tell me they weren't renewing the show because of the completion rate, uh, it wasn't it wasn't high enough, of course. I was very disappointed, Henderson said. What showrunner wouldn't be? I'd been told a couple of weeks ago that they were hoping completion would get higher. I guess it didn't, probably not. <laughs> and again, this is somebody who was pointing to the early success of this program, at least through its first three episodes, which is kind of funny because I give shows three episodes to actually bring me in. I usually give a film about a half an hour before I give up on it. Uh, you got to bring me in. If you don't and I become disinterested, I'm not going to finish it. And that tells you whether or not something's successful. And that's probably going to drive whether or not an advertiser is going to want to put their money into a given show or streaming service. So I'm going to wonder what Parrot Analytics would do with this show now as a, uh, a meager campaign has begun, at least for this uh, last kill show, uh, because they have a hashtag working. It's called Renew First Kill. And as that campaign spreads across social media, which it hasn't got a lot of support, um, they would likely give this thing the marketing hype, which is what Parrot Analytics is good for. Um, kind of, uh, they, they would give them kind of the boost that would maybe get the show renewed somehow. Um, I hope not. I hope Netflix sticks to their guns because, again, Parrot Analytics is just like Twitter. It's not real. Uh, it's plain to see that the actual numbers that are uh, behind some of these things versus the perceived blind and manipulated performance, which again is just tracking social media and data scraping like torrents and stuff like that, uh, they are very far apart indeed, at least as far as the results. So I have to ask you, 
What do you think? Do you think these these analytics services like Parrot and others are actually valuable? Do you think they, they give a realistic picture of the genuine audience interest in a given uh, television or entertainment product? Um, in my opinion, which you probably gleaned from the course of this uh, video, I don't. I think they're valueless, and I think they actually lead to a problem which can actually send people in the wrong direction. Uh, if these networks listen to the kind of fake hype that is created by these marketing systems, well, they, uh, they shouldn't be. They have the access to the real numbers, so why would they? Again, it's 100% marketing. So, uh, But anyway, like I said, whatever you think, put it down in the comments section below. Let's have a conversation about it. With that, I'm going to tell you to support other independent creators here on the platform. They absolutely deserve it. Uh, hopefully, we can build our little fellowship even bigger every single day. With that being said, be sure to take care of yourself. Take care of others. Wash your hands, of course, because it's good hygiene. And until next time, bye. Thanks for visiting today. Be sure you're subscribed and hit that for alerts. Yay! Of course, like and share all of the videos that you can as it helps with the algorithm. Have a great day.